Hi guys, good morning. Uh, today we're going to learn about graphing quadratics. We're going to start a new section and I'm also going to ask you to start taking Cornell notes. Um, you should have watched a video yesterday explaining to you exactly why Cornell notes are used, why they're useful, and what you should do with them. Okay, so we're going to, I'm going to pretend I'm you and I'm going to lead you, model the note taking skills. For the first couple of times and then after that I expect you guys to do the same thing on your own. Okay first thing you want to do is put your first and last name up here in the upper right hand corner. You want to put um, the period and of course today's date. In the center is where your topic goes. Okay, and today's topic is graphing quadratics. Quadratics is a form of a function. It's your parabolic function, y equals to x squared. At the very up hand corner right here, I want you to write assignment and then do. So you're going to be getting an assignment today. That's where you're going to write down what day it's due and then exactly what it is here in this little space. Um, notes are a record of your learning. You always want to use it in lecture, when you're listening, when you're reading, when you're watching videos, when you're working in groups, etc. Anytime you need to recall information, okay? Basically, you need this all the time. What you're going to do is you're going to put three fingers here. Don't mind my broken nail. <laughs> And you're going to put your three fingers there, and um, you're just going to kind of draw a line going down. Oops, I forgot. Before you do that, I want you to write this down. Essential question. What's the essential question for today? So what we're going to learn is how do you graph... and identify... key attributes of parabolic functions. Remember parabolic functions is just another fancy word for quadratic functions. And your second question is how do you, I'm sorry, how do transformations How do transformations relate to f of x equals to x squared? Okay, so we're going to do transformations. I think you know, you should be familiar with what transformations are. We're going to explore them a little bit further today. Out of the essential question, there are some things that you want to start thinking about, and that is the key attributes of parabolic functions. We always take key attributes of any function. All right, so back to my three fingers and my broken nail. Uh, you're going to draw an imaginary line, like not not imaginary, but you're going to draw a line going down. Um, I'm just going to use the edge of another sheet of paper. And you're not going to go all the way to the bottom. Just leave like three or four lines at the bottom so that you can have your summary. Okay, so I split the page. I stopped there. And... At the, on the left hand side, which you should have seen the video, this is where you're going to put your questions and main ideas. Okay, and on the right hand side, this is where you're going to do your notes. Like anything that I say that you think is important, examples, you know, information like that. So at the very bottom, you're going to draw a line across. This is going to be for your summary. So from now on, um, what you're going to do is you're going to do the same thing for any page and every page that you take notes on. Okay, this summary is really important. It helps you to think critically. 
Um, it helps you look over your notes. You're going to highlight, edit, or add information as we learn more about the topic. Uh, you also want to write any questions or any reflection that you may have in this section. Okay, guys, so to talk about our topic really quickly is we're going to start talking about quadratic functions, which we already talked about. And what we have is that a quadratic function has an exponent of 2. So this is your exponent. So I'm going to write y equals to x squared. This is called your exponent. And this is called your base. Okay, when you write a quadratic function, it is written as ax squared plus bx plus c, where a cannot be equal to zero. If a was equal to zero, it would make zero x squared, which would get rid of that term, and you would just have a linear function. In other words, this kind of looks like mx plus b y equals to mx plus b, which is the function, um, which is the, I guess, a setup for a linear function. Okay, so this term, the first term, is called a quadratic term. This is your linear term, where you have a, just a straight line. And then that last letter, the C, that stands for a constant term. And a constant term is just like a number, a number with no variable. These are important terms for you to know. Um, the graph of a quadratic function is called a parabola. So just to do a real quick sketch, I think we all know, or hopefully you know by now, if not you're never discovered today, that this is a quadratic function. This is a para parabola shape. Okay. So the first thing I'd like you guys to do is gonna be our example one. So I want you to graph in your calculator f of x equals to 3x squared minus 12x plus 6. And actually, I'm going to ask you to first make a table of values. So inside I'm going to write 3x squared minus 12x plus 6. And then you're going to write f of x. And then what is your ordered pairs at the very end? I'm going to go ahead and give you the ordered pairs. I want you to start with zero. You don't always have to start with zero. You should actually get positive and negative numbers, but I know that this graph is going to be in the first quadrant, so first and fourth. So I'm going to just pick positive numbers. First thing you're going to do is you're going to substitute a zero wherever you see an x into the equation. So you really have 3 times 0 squared minus 12 times 0 plus 6. This one's easy. Z 0 times anything is 0. So that gets rid of this. And all you're left with is 6. Your ordered pair, your input was 0 and your output was 6. I want you to do the same thing for 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, when you did the math, you should have gotten the results for the table. You should have substituted a 1 into the equation wherever you see an x and get your output. You should have done the same thing for 2, 3, and 4. Okay, for each of your input values, they're coming from your x values. That's your input. Um, 
I have a bunch of output values after I did the math, okay? So your ordered pairs are going to be 0, 6, 1, negative 3, 2, negative 6, 3, negative 3, and 4, 6. And I went ahead and plotted them on my own little graph that I made up. If you like to have a grid, you can go ahead and do it um, on your warm-up notebook, and then you can actually have a grid. So I went ahead and plotted 0, 6, um, 1, negative 3, 2, negative 6, 3, negative 3, and 4, positive 6. When you connect the dots, you end up getting kind of like a smooth curve, and you end up seeing a parabola okay there's two things that are important about this it has an axis of symmetry there seems to be a pattern between each of the values this is due to, to the axis of symmetry of the parabola the axis of symmetry is a line through the graph of a parabola that divides the graph into two congruent halves so axis of symmetry is line through the graph that divides it into two congruent, this is a key word here, halves. What does congruent mean? Each side of the parabola is a reflection of the other side. Okay, the axis of symmetry will intersect the parabola at only one point. Axis symmetry is sometimes abbreviated with AOS. So the axis of symmetry will intersect parabola at only one point. This is called the vertex. So we have vertex, axis of symmetry, congruent as vocabulary words. If you guys will turn to, um, oh, one last thing. Notice that, so I'm gonna draw an axis of symmetry down the middle. So this is your vertex. And this line going down the middle of the graph, cutting it into two equal sides, is your axis of symmetry. Notice that the x-coordinate of, um, you know, these two points are equal distance. This is the same distance from, sorry, I don't know if it cut it off or not, but this is the same distance from the other half. So uh, the vertex can actually be found using a, um, a formula called x equals to negative b divided by 2a. And the axis of symmetry, sorry, I wrote this down wrong. X equals to negative B divided by 2A is the formula for the axis of symmetry. Okay. So I'm about to run out of time, so I'm going to go ahead and tell you that um, we're going to have some problems um, to do right now in class. We went over the axis of symmetry, the vertex, and I actually want you guys to do some examples, and we'll talk about those in class. We're going to graph them, get the axis of symmetry, the vertex, and do a couple more tables. All right, guys, thank you for your time and your attention. You guys are awesome. Later on tonight, when you go through your notes, you're going to write down some of the questions that you may have or the main ideas, which would be your vocabulary. So you rewrite them, and then you're going to write a little summary about what we learned today. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.